I'm with the Town of Afton. I'm the Town Administrator, and I just want to say on behalf of the Town of Afton, welcome. Thank you for coming and providing for this public hearing and the opportunity for our community to give public comment on this preliminary determination. I just want to reiterate something that Lisa stated in her presentation, which is that you are not here because there is an emergency with our water system. The Town of Afton takes the responsibility of the health, safety, and welfare of our community very seriously. The town has a long-standing history of clean drinking water. The intermittent spring has been used as the town of Afton's primary water source since the 50s, so over 70 years. A core principle of good regulatory governance and administration is transparency because transparency leads to credibility. EPA region aids deviation from their policy and lack of transparency in the past four years leading to this predetermination is concerning and an infringement of the rights of, as a public water system that we have. We, have, we, sh we should have the right to have policy and regulation prescribed to our system without bias or any arbitrary nature in order for us to make good sound decisions about the future of our community. The spring is a, is a unique system and I think that was mentioned quite a bit here tonight in the presentation on how unique the Afton system is. EPA's policies aren't set up to intake its uniqueness. Um, most of EPA's groundwater rules are set up based on wells. Um, there's no specific guideline for a spring that is groundwater source. Our spring has the ability right now to completely operate off the grid. Um, it's 100% green. We have gravity feed from the intermittent spring down in Shore Town of Afton in the event of a grid failure with power, we can still turn our water and get a drink. Um, if changes are made to that, that might not be a possibility in the future. We have a long history of working with the town and EPA on the periodic springs. We cannot emphasize enough that all parties agreed on the need to provide safe drinking water to the community, and no one takes that responsibility more seriously than your town of Afton. And they have been providing safe drinking water to this community for decades. Again, as has been mentioned, one of the key criteria for determining GWIDI is the presence of Cryptosporidium and Giardia, and as already been mentioned, uh, those have never been detected in the town's water supply. We continue to disagree with EPA's preliminary GWIDI determination, and again, we refer EPA to the hydrologic evaluation that we completed in 2020 that was completed by a Wyoming professional engineer and a Wyoming professional geologist. Uh, we were frustrated that that was only briefly mentioned in the hearing materials. Our evaluation uh, concluded that the science did not support a GWIDI determination for the springs. And to highlight the main points, our evaluation does not support that a rapid and significant change in water temperature occurs. It identifies that changes in water temperature do not appear to correlate with the timing of precipitation, snow melt, or air temperatures. And it indicates an estimated travel time of months to over a year from the recharge area to the springs. We were disappointed in what we felt was EPA's disregard of that report and its conclusions and the lack of professional dialogue following the, re the report's submittal. Uh, we appreciate the evaluation that was provided in the hearing materials, um, but that was not provided until nearly two years after we submitted that report and after EPA had indicated it would make a preliminary determination. Uh, we also agree that EPA choosing to deviate from its policy by collecting the final MPA sample before the town was able to correct all significant deficiencies doesn't support sound science, and it only adds to concerns about potential subjectivity and bias in this process. Finally, we continue to have concerns with data collection that has been inconsistent and has not followed EPA's policies and guidance based on the regulations. And as, as EPA is aware, um, there continues to be fundamental disagreement on the conclusions made by interpreting the available data. So we recommend that EPA work with the town and the DEQ to design and conduct further assessment of the springs. We all agree that it's a unique springs and I think it warrants further assessment. And DEQ stands ready to help with that effort. Uh, finally, we do encourage that EPA uses the feedback it has heard to update this program's policies, guidance, and regulations. Uh, they need to ensure that they reflect the best available scientific methods. Um, we feel that additional quality assurance measures would benefit this program greatly and would also improve transparency. My name is Keith Buran. I'm with the Buran Firm in Cheyenne. I'm an attorney for the town of Afton, and I want to thank you for the opportunity to address EPA tonight, even as briefly as it is. Uh, 
you kind of have to anticipate a more uh, detailed presentation, but our request for that was denied. Lisa Kahn said Afton's periodic spring is not just unique, it's extremely unique in the U.S. Yet EPA is trying to regulate that system without adequate regulations and through inconsistent application of policies that are now decades old. There are several instances in the record where EPA has failed to follow its own policies or distance itself from its own policies and science to reach the preliminary determination. I want to focus on a few of those. The MPAs. EPA relies heavily on one MPA sample collected in August 2021 that scored 23. That's clearly the outlier of all MPA tests that have been conducted to date going back literally almost decades. I believe early 2000s. The 23 score is the outlier from the historic MPA sampling. MPA sampling has consistently shown low risk or under 15 scores for many years over many samples. And again, no Giardia, no Cryptosporidium. We believe EPA failed to follow at least the spirit of its own policy when it took the 2021 MPA because Afton was in the process and under the compliance schedule for correcting the significant deficiency related to the flapper gate. EPA didn't wait for the town to correct that significant deficiency and instead proceeded with the MPA prior to that being done. EPA also does not have two MPA scores above 15. Under EPA's own guidance, use of MPAs does not dictate a GUI determination. But equally important, EPA stated in a 2021 response to the town of Afton, EPA is concerned that MPAs are not the best tool for evaluating the periodic spring. It cited several limitations and said newer, more effective MPA sampling devices and analytical methods are available. EPA's preliminary determination has also foreclosed the ability for the town to pursue filtration avoidance criteria. We believe that's inappropriate and pre-decisional. So we would again urge EPA not to make a weekly determination at this point and instead opt for additional study. The town is ready to participate with the interested stakeholders in accomplishing that. If there was a true concern with our water source, its quality or safety, we as residents would like to know about it and would like to address it. The reality is there's nothing wrong with our water. The EPA is concerned that one day our source might be contaminated and someone might possibly become sick. EPA is raising concern with potential influence of surface water without knowing anything about the recharge area or the path to the source. The EPA uses lots of words like might or probable or maybe. Ms. O'Connor earlier stated that in making this determination that the EPA used available data. That's not entirely accurate. The EPA used data that agreed with their predetermined decision. The EPA is relying on a 30-year-old study conducted by a graduate student at the University of Wyoming where there's no evidence of external peer review or analysis. Meanwhile, they completely disregarded the preeminent study that was done prior to that study in 1990, but more importantly, completely disregarded the Wyoming Department of Environmental Quality's hydroelectric, hydrogeologic evaluation of the periodic spring conducted just two years ago. Why would the EPA use a non-peer reviewed college student's paper over a Wyoming DEQ study conducted by professional licensed engineers and geologists? Perhaps because the 30 year old paper agreed with the data or the, the data from that paper reinforced the position that the EPA has indicated they would like to take. The 2020 DEQ study completely refutes the majority of the EPA's questionable rationale as to the potential remote risks to our water system. This study again was taken by a professional engineer and professional geologist less than two years ago, or slightly over two years, excuse me. The EPA's failure to even acknowledge the Wyoming DEQ study or briefly acknowledge it and the preliminary technical evaluation shows the negligent, unjustified, and unwarranted determination the EPA is attempting to make especially considering that the EPA signed off on and encouraged the DEQ to conduct this study. The EPA has knowingly deviated from its own policies and has failed to provide recent, reliable, or reputable information as to any issue or to any bona fide risk to the active water source. Um, 
Together with uh, my colleague Brandon Taylor, we represent the town of Afton. We're the we're the day-to-day -day council for the town. Um, I have spent uh, nearly 30 years as a regulatory attorney. I also practice business law and a little bit of municipal, but the main focus of my practice is regulatory law, mostly in the electricity and uh, state water utility regulatory arena. When this matter landed at the town, we took it very seriously. Um, we knew, Brandon and I, Violet knew that we didn't have the technical expertise and the experience to guide the town through this, uh, through this process. And so the town engaged Keith Burrum, who's an expert in this area, and since engaging him, we also engaged another one of his colleagues, a Washington, D.C. attorney, who's assisting us as well. And I understand he couldn't be here tonight because of some travel restrictions. But it's important for everybody to know that we're taking, we're taking this very seriously. And we, believe, we believe in our position, and we intend to, to defend it. I know that this probably will end up in court, either at the Tenth Circuit or in front of one of our U.S. District Court judges in Wyoming. And if I were one of those judges, I think I'd quote from Ms. Khan tonight when she said, this is the only drinking water source we know of in the entire country that is fed by a periodic spring. And then I think I'd add to that my opinion and say, that same periodic spring has fed a community for decades upon decades with safe, reliable drinking water. And I think the rest of the opinion would just write itself because this is a unique situation that requires a, a unique solution, just like our director of public utilities, Josh Buechler, said. And Mr. Roll, who also said, you know, one size does not fit all. And thank you for coming here tonight and listening to us, but please go one step further and think outside the box and consider this from our perspective. If we do end up in court, I think you've got serious problems. And, and I think you know you I think you know you've got holes in your case. And the first problem is with testing. It's sloppy at best and secretive at worst. Mr. Chamberlain just said you didn't you didn't follow the testing procedures that are scientifically approved. Tests were taken, uh, you know, without without the proper procedures. There were not several samples taken. So that's that's a problem, and I think you know it. Another problem is monitoring. We've done a good job monitoring, and you're not recognizing. That. You're just dismissing our monitoring. And, um, uh, and what we've done is scientifically defensible, and we can show that in court. A fourth problem is lack of peer review of the studies that you're relying on. My colleague Brandon Taylor mentioned that, and I'm sure that's in the record. Another problem is the unfair procedure that you've engaged in. You've taken a really heavy-handed approach with your handling of this problem, and it's, it's not going to be overlooked by a judge. We often call that failure to act with good faith, and being guilty of unclean hands, and a little play on words, shows that you're doing so when there's no unclean water. But it's not too late. Um, you, can, you can take a pause, failing to do so would be a mistake. Take a deep breath, take a drink of our water, and here's the prudent path forward. One, engage in a collaborative effort like you've been uh, requested. Two, help us develop a robust monitoring program and we'll stick to it. Three, additional study, scientific studies. Four, watershed control. Ms. Khan mentioned it, nobody else did. If you really think the water is coming from, from you know, maybe as much as four miles, four miles away, let's get, let's get on with some watershed control, remove beaver dams, eliminate beavers, work with the game and fish, let's eliminate anything that can connect in our water. It's not that hard to do, and it's a lot cheaper than a, than a testing uh, treatment facility. And then five, we have a backup plan. Wells and uh, an alternative water source. We welcome further discussion, but we are ready to defend our position. Thank you, Tim. We have been involved in the discussion since 2013 and have provided hours of on-site technical assistance over the years and feel quite familiar with the water source and the system. 
We do not agree that the spring is or should be classified as groundwater under the direct influence of surface water. By the EPA's own admission, in previous discussions and reports, MPAs are subjective, rely on the expertise of the sampler, and are not the best indicator for such a classification. Further reports have suggested that high turbidity is not a definite indicator as well. It is possible to have high turbidity and an MPA rated as low risk. We believe that over time, anyone can develop confirmation bias in that they may prescribe tests or reports that support an assumption or bias about what they want the outcome to be. We believe that this issue has suffered from such an assumption and as a result of the desired outcome based on past knowledge in other areas of the country. As we have suggested in other areas of Wyoming, side-by-side -side MPAs could be conducted by a contractor supplied by the agency and a contractor from the community. Separate labs could analyze and results could be compared for a more defined quality control template that could be developed for contractor use. We would therefore suggest that a watershed study, source water protection plan, and additional water quality testing of the source on a more frequent basis. With that data, along with the previous reports on hydrology, turbidity, MPAs, a fuller understanding of the spring and a path forward will appear so that all parties' concern, concerns are addressed. Primarily good, safe, clean, and affordable drinking water as the periodic spring has provided for many years. The determination seems to be premature, agenda-driven, and without regard for the status of the water we're providing. We are and have been in compliance with the national safe drinking water requirements. The presentation this evening admitted that you have never determined the source of the turbidity that you're concerned about. Should we not be seeking additional information about this? As already mentioned, there are several factors that are not being considered. There are procedural missteps and testing errors. There are disagreements between agencies. We're seeing changes in your statements and viewpoints. This is a premature determination and a grossly premature prescription. Given the stellar history of our drinking water and our ongoing and consistent compliance with the safe water, safe drinking water requirements, doesn't a 10 plus million dollar facility and its ongoing maintenance seem unreasonable, illogical, and frankly wasteful? This should be a combined effort and in full transparency by all parties. We should be open to all assessments. We should be reviewing all available data. We should be considering the unique features of our periodic spring and the final decision and resulting prescriptions should be open to peer review, assessment, and affirmation. If there comes a time that we're not able to, make, to maintain compliance with the national safe drinking water requirements, it is then that we should be having these conversations and expending resources for filtration as needed. I'm quite familiar with uh, Giardia and Cryptosporidium. Those are two standard corn diseases and any time somebody presents with those two things, they are to be uh, samples to be sent to the State Public Laboratory in Cheyenne for confirmation. I'm happy to report we have never had crypto or GRD in our water system. That being said, with our water quality having had an outstanding record for over 60 years, there's no cause for this concern. Why was the intermittent spring not ever considered or questioned to be a groundwater under the direct influence of surface water before? Nothing changed with our water system and your regulations and policies did not change either, so why now? And I'd also like to state for the crowd that the EPA is here at the request of the town of Afton that they did not have an intent to have this meeting. But if you read through your document, there's a lot of maze and maybe and possibly. There's, there's not a lot of hard science behind that. And if there is, we would, we would love to see it. Um, I'm a member of the Wyoming Legislature representing this area. I'm also sitting as the chairman of the Select Water Committee. I am a licensed professional engineer and I have 40 years of water resource engineering under my belt. The fact that we have 60, actually 63 years of unprecedented, zero health concerns from that spring source should, should play a very major factor in our decision. I've reviewed the MPA tests and uh, sanitary surveys produced on our springs and I want to emphatically say that I do not agree with their conclusions. It's my professional opinion that that 
The periodic spring is a safe source for this community. Over the last 30 years, the town of Afton has completed several improvement projects to both the spring source and transmission system. Bringing the cost of these projects to today's dollars, that equates to approximately $11.6 million of improvements. Each project was designed by a professional engineer to meet Wyoming DEQ rules and regulations. Each project received a permit to construct from Wyoming DEQ, and each project was constructed according to the issued permits. Over the last 30 years, protection of the source has only increased by completion of these projects, including the new screens and flapper gate system that was installed less than a year ago. The town of Afton has a very unique water and sewer system that relies on no electricity. This system runs uh, day and night, rain or shine, with, with power or, or without power. Uh, the proposed filtration plant will, will eliminate that. In addition, it will possibly eliminate the, the hydro swift creek, a uh, potential power source, and turn Afton from a net producer of, of power from the swift creek to a, a consumer of power. A uh, filtration plant based on the results of, of one MPA test uh, is, is also questionable to me. You know, the, the scientific method uh, requires that the results be be repeatable and that they be, be consistent and then produced in the same way. I, I've asked tonight where those those MPA samples were pulled from. And I, I, I've heard that they were pulled from near the end of the row or from making a 97,000 gallon tank. At, at any rate, they weren't consistent. Afton constructed the first wing has been indicated to the spring in 1958. And the residents of Afton have been happily and gratefully utilizing the spring as the primary source of their water for now over 64 years. As has been mentioned, during this long period, Afton has had zero health issues which have been tied to the spring. The one and only bad quality test in 2003 was associated with an issue within the town's distribution system not the spring, in other words, five miles down canyon from the spring. Afton's water is fantastic and, in all reality, possesses a near zero limit health risk. And I say near zero only because there is nothing in this world that is absolute. The studies on the spring, including Ruby and Shreve and Huntoon and Calhoun, which have been mentioned, identified the east side of the Absaroka thrust sheet of the Salt River Range as the recharge area of the spring, which is a very pristine area and unchanged from 100 years ago. But, and this was not quoted anywhere, in the words of both Ruby and Huntoon, they say, quote, the discharge water is on the order of decades to centuries old. Water which is flowing thousands of feet below the ground in the Madison Limestone Formation for decades or centuries is not surface water. I spent uh, over nine years working with the Wyoming Association of Rural Water Systems. I was at the 2018 meeting in Cheyenne over the, with regard to the spring. Um, I had the opportunity and uh, the interesting experience of watching different samplers take MPA tests. And um, I would just like to say and point out that all samplers are not created equal. Many times we would go to these sites, they would have the collection box lid off, they would have their pumping equipment in there, they would have animals with them, the lids weren't put back on. I don't know if there was anyone that was uh, present. Those MPA tests, of course, require a lot of time. They're 15, 16, 18 hours. I don't know if anyone was there to, to uh, monitor how that test was taken, but it is something to be considered um, because those tests can be skewed by um, a lack of care by the sampler. Number two is that uh, in preparation of that meeting, and I'm reaching back to my memory, but uh, I think over about a 12 to 15 year period before Afton began to chlorinate, all of their tests, they had a 98% safe or clean sampling throughout their distribution system. That's over 150 monthly samples, which I think is a pretty random sampling without chlorination and disinfection which are not just samples of the spring, the source, but they're also samples of the entire distribution system and any possible uh, cross-connections. And they were clean, 98%. The larger cities only have to make a 90%. 
This was without any, any disinfection. And I think that's a, a piece of information that really ought to be considered. I think it's as valuable to look at those kinds of pieces of information as it is to think about um, one, a one-off sample that happens overnight or in, in one particular instance. On July 30th, 2007, so 15 years ago, a high turbidity event or cloudiness in the water occurred at the intermittent spring. Since the EPA has primacy over public drinking water in Wyoming, the Afton Board of Public Utilities followed policy and procedure by calling the EPA to provide technical assistance in monitoring this event and testing the water for possible contamination. A site visit was made by the EPA representatives on August 2nd. All tests for contamination came back negative. By August 6th, the turbidity had dropped to acceptable levels. During this event, which lasted eight days, did the town of Afton have to go without drinking water? Was there a boil order? Did anyone get sick from the drinking water? The answer is no. Why did not any of this happen? Let me read the explanation of what was done during this period of time from the EPA's record of this event. Quote, all during this period, meaning July 30 to August 6, the spring source was diverted and wells were used as source water for Afton, unquote. This brings up a unique solution the town has implemented for years, since the 60s, to ensure safe water at all times. There are two wells connected to our water system that can also service the town of Afton with drinking water. These wells are actually used in the summer to supplement the spring water during periods of high demand when everyone is watering their lawns. But they can also be used in case there's ever a problem with our water from the intermittent spring. This was done during the high turbidity event in July and August of 2007. It appears from the EPA's record that using the wells during this time that there was a problem with the spring was a perfectly acceptable alternative until the problem was resolved. So I ask, if water from these two wells can be used in the event there is a problem with water from the intermittent spring, why would we need to build a multi-million dollar filtration treatment facility which will take additional millions of dollars to run and ma maintain ever after to solve a problem that may or may not exist when we already have a way of delivering safe water under any foreseeable circumstances. A filtration treatment facility is a solution looking for a problem. We've had two cases of turbidity, the 2003 and the 2007. That's been 15 years since the last instance of that. During my time with the town of Afton, I will also state that there's a study, I can't quote it uh, directly now, but I can certainly find it, where it said, um, I'm not sure which study it was, that it might be possible that this water takes decades, if not 3,000 years, for it to filter through the system. Once again, there's not been enough determination, and the EPA, I think, is selectively picking which study they would like to. I simply want to state that history has clearly indicated that making decisions based on partial or flawed information is very dangerous. The EPA has partial information at best on Afton's water system. So I would just invite us to be good students of history and move forward gathering solid information, current information, complete information, and then make a good decision for the area residents that daily utilize the Afton water system. Thank you. The EPA seems to have already made a determination that the Afton Spring is contaminated. Has the EPA done anything to prove where that contamination, that turbidity or contamination is coming from? Why is Afton guilty and not innocent until proven guilty? This meeting represents flawed stewardship. Um, forgive me for questioning the authority 
and to trust the source of science. But how you've represented yourself in this process has not lended credibility to that trust. I just got this report two hours, not even two hours, an hour before this meeting. I was able to walk through it and point out many unknowns in your own language. The current administration talks about going green. What's more green than a periodic intermittent spring that's had no issues up to this point? I was a university professor of critical thinking for 30 years in the state of Idaho. I know that your job is to apply rules to come to conclusions about issues based on facts. I know that's your job as a, as a uh, government agent. Uh, one of the classes I taught, though, in those 30 years of college was a course in foundational American documents. And I know it may be quaint or irrelevant for some uh, for me to be quoting from the Constitution. Article 10 reads, the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. And Article 9, the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. I know that you folks are sworn to uphold and defend the Constitution. You are also good Americans, and we appreciate that. What we're seeing here tonight is one of the foundational exercises in democracy. And I have not heard a single comment in favor of the EPA's proposal. Every single comment, and I'm commenter number 31 at least, has been uh, opposed to this. If our democracy really is at risk, then I guess this is a good test. This is a crucible for that because our local democracy is saying, please don't do this. Some communities really need EPA intervention. Some people are begging for your intervention. Please help those people out. Right here, though, we're kind of saying we like our water. Yeah. I just want to come up here and say that there are six, six periodic springs in the world, one in the United States. So unless the EPA has gone and tested any of the other five periodic springs in the world and figured out how to make a test just for those springs, I have to say that the testing that's being done here shouldn't even happen. 